Hey guys, it's Dr. John with your Maintenance Minute. Today I'm going to give you a practical example regarding mean time between failure or mean time to failure. If you don't mind, I'm going to use these terms interchangeably. I know they don't mean exactly the same thing, but for this practical example, let's just assume that they probably that they do. My personal car is a 2011 Ford Escape. Okay, it's a pretty good car and it's in good shape because I've maintained it fairly well over the years. But if you think about an asset like a car as a collection of components, the asset itself has a sort of a mean time between failure or a mean time to failure, and it's made of a collection of the components. And those components are what limit that. That, that mean time between failure of the asset is chiefly limited by sort of the weakest system or the weakest component of your equipment. So for example, my car, I want to talk about four systems or components. I've got the fuel system, which includes the fuel tank, of course. I've got the oil and the filtration system. I've got tires, like obviously you have on your car. And then I have a serpentine belt. So when I bought that car full of gas, brand spanking new, drove it off the car lot, I could have driven that car forever until the very first system or the first component failed. And the first thing to go on a car, mine like yours, the very first thing that's going to happen is that combustion will stop due to inadequate fuel. You're going to run out of gas. So my car gets about, or used to anyway, but get about 400 miles to a tank. So I could drive that car, say, for 350, 380. Then I had to stop and put fuel in the tank. Now, I could drive that car forever from east to west, west to east, back and forth by just stopping and putting fuel in it, right? I would never have that failure mode of combustion uh, stopping due to lack of adequate fuel. I wouldn't have that failure mode. The next thing that would fail on my car is the oil and the filtration system. Now, most of us run synthetic oil, so we're probably good anywhere between five and 10,000. I'm a little bit old school here. I'm, I'm a little, I get a little nervous around 5,000, so I change my oil and filter at 5,000. So uh, every 380 miles, 350, I stop and get gas. Every 5,000 or so, I stop and change the oil and change the filter. I could drive that car forever until the next system failed. In this case would be the tires in my example. I know this sounds like a made up number, but I actually get about 90,000 miles on my tires because I take extremely good care of those tires. I rotate them every 5,000. So every time I take my car in for an oil change, I have the tires rotated. Every 10,000 miles, I have them rotated and balanced. So I've got this system, maintenance, preventive maintenance, if you will, in my car. I stop and I get fuel every 350 miles or so. I change the oil and the filter every 5,000 miles. And then I alternate between rotating tires and rotating and balancing. The next thing to fail on my car is the serpentine belt. Way back in the last century, so, you know, we all had different kinds of belts on our cars. Now it's generally one big serpentine belt. Ford Motor Company says you can get about 100,000 miles out of that serpentine belt. And so, I change it. Now my car's got um, 209, or sorry, got 195,000. I've changed the serpentine belt once. It's going to be due next time I take it in for that oil change, tire rotation. I'm going to get the serpentine belt changed while I'm there. My point is if you look at your assets, your equipment as a collection of components, the asset itself has a, a collection of, of failure modes and it's made up of the components. And the weakest one, the first one to go, is the first one to go. And that's the one that we're going to tend to. And in the case of our cars, it's the fuel tank. So we don't run out of gas and then go get gas and then run out of gas go get gas. We pay attention to the surf, the servicing preventive maintenance. That's other seven types of PM servicing is one of them. That's where we put fuel in our car. Uh, just a real quick message, a practical example of mean time between failure and mean time to failure. And that keeps your car running forever. If you do those principal preventive maintenance type tasks, some of them are sort of recommended by the OEM. But if you do those, you wash your car, keep it clean and operate it properly, of course your car will literally run forever like mine has. Uh, I'm Dr. John, and this has been your Maintenance Minute.